Well, good morning, Shepherd of the Hills. For those of you that are in person, we are so excited to have you in person with us. If you are watching online, which we have a couple of people who have commented in uh, saying that they're watching online, please do. Please comment in the comment section letting us know that you are watching, uh, saying hello, telling us where maybe you're watching from and how many people are watching with you. We are excited to have... Um, the, the Tibbin family and the Weiss family and uh, the Paulsons and the Van Ornums. We are so excited to have you guys with us. We have an amazing service for you. Pastor Steve has a great message. Some things to uh, look forward to that are going to be coming up. Next weekend, we are back in person for all four services. So we will have our Saturday service starting back up and then the three on Sunday. But also, our Sunday school starts back up in person. We are so excited to have all of the kids joining us back in person. Again, we will be following all of the COVID protocols that we have from before. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me about the Sunday school information. So again, continue to just comment in the comment section if you are online with us. If you're here in person, you can do also sharing it after the service. If you're online, you can share this message with your friends and family and those that you love and care about. So we hope that you enjoy the service. Again, uh, we are just excited to have you with us. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we see your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captives hearts released the hurt the sick, the poor, at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We pray revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness Show your mighty and heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here. We pray. Reaching the near and far, no force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Wake the kingdom seed in us, fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. Let 
Let the darkness fear Show your mighty end Heal our streets and land Set your church on fire Win this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray Good morning everybody. Welcome into God's house, to God's family, and in God's holy name we worship in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you pray with me please? Holy Lord Jesus, we pray that you would bless us during the time that your Holy Spirit has gathered us together, that you would speak your word of grace and truth to us, that you would lift us up on wings like eagles, that you would remind us that our God and Savior is with us always, and that whatever we face, we do not face it alone. Bless our worship, Lord Jesus Christ, in your holy name. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes, from us, comes to us from Luke chapter 2, the continuation of the Christmas gospel. In Luke chapter 2, Jesus is born, and now this is what happens next. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel." The child's mother and father marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The word of our Lord. We join together to proclaim our faith in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we do so this morning as we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just like we sang in that opening song, Build Your Kingdom Here, the church, us, the church body, are the actuation of the Holy Spirit here on earth through us. We achieve the works of Christ now, after his ascension. But we only do that because we know who he is, because he is the Son of God. Jesus is part of the Trinity. He is the Son to the Father to the Spirit, all three God in one. And we praise him because he has reached a level for us that we could not on our own, uh, allowing us to reach a, whole, a right relationship with him. And we praise him for it. throne 
earth you formed was not your home. A love like this, the world had never known. A crown of thorns to mock your name, forgiveness fell.
Will you pray with me, please? Holy Lord Jesus, now that you're here, we pray that by your Holy Spirit you would fill our hearts with the faith we need to endure, to persevere, even to triumph. Remind us, Lord Jesus, that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone because you have come into the world and into our hearts to stay. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us during this time, not in the words of simple human wisdom, but with the voice of a loving and mighty God. In your holy and precious name, we are bold to pray this in all things. Amen. 29 Christmases as a pastor, and this is the first time I get to preach on Simeon and the Song of Simeon in Luke chapter 2. There's a reason for this. This is the appointed gospel reading pretty much every year for the Sunday after Christmas. Like I said before, it's, it's Luke chapter 2. It's the next, uh, the next part of the birth narrative of Jesus Christ. But it's always the Sunday after Christmas. And just about every pastor in the business on the Sunday after Christmas is on vacation. And, you know, and I try to be as good a pastor as I can be, which means I follow the crowd and take vacation the Sunday after Christmas until 2020. Because ordinarily, what we would have today would be our good friend Dwayne Matz leading worship and delivering the sermon. Uh, but Dwayne up and caught himself a, a batch of COVID, and, and he's still recovering, and he's doing quite well. But, you know, the things some guys won't do to get out of work. So, you're stuck with me today. 
and the Song of Simeon. If you grew up in the Lutheran church, and if you remember the old Lutheran hymnal, on, uh, when we would use page 15, the communion service, after communion, the pastor would invite us to stand and sing the Nunc Dimittis. The nunc dimittis, that's the Latin phrase that means, Lord, now dismiss. And it's the song of Simeon. And in the old hymnal language, it'd be, um, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. It's a beautiful song, the song of Simeon. And I've waited 29 years to get to share something about it. For one thing, in, uh, in our new hymnals, the ones we have now, uh, it's still in there, except now it's called Divine Service Setting 3 when we use the hymnals. But the, the people who produced the new hymnal still kept the Latin in there. They really should have checked with me first because the, the Latin really doesn't do well in, in modern worship. So I will always refer to it as the Song of Simeon rather than the Nunc Dimittis. Simeon was waiting a lifetime for what happened to him in the temple in Jerusalem a few days after Christ had been born just outside of town in the little backward suburb called Bethlehem. He had been waiting that long to see what God had promised to him. The Holy Spirit had let Simeon know, you will not die before seeing the Lord's Christ. And here it was. But he had to wait. And I, I think if we've learned anything in the 12 months that constitute our calendar 2020, I think we've had to learn to wait. I think God has made us learn how to wait. But not just that. He's taught us how to wait and at the same time has taught us all over again how to hope. Because waiting is one thing. Waiting in hope is the thing for a follower of Jesus Christ, for a child of God. Some people really do know how to wait quite well. They, they might not be so good at the hoping, but they, they've had no choice but to learn how to wait. Chicago Cubs fans had to wait 108 years between World Series titles. Now, not all of them, uh, because I'd venture to say, you know, good luck finding a 108-year-old Chicago Cubs fan in 2016. Uh, I don't think Cubs fans live nearly that long. But that's how long they had to wait. Buffalo Bills fans, of which I am one, I was born into it, the last time the Buffalo Bills won anything, they won the AFL championship in 1966. Not, not before the NFL, before they merged into the NFL. The last time they won anything worth winning was the AFL in 1966, January of 1966. I was born later that year, and the Bills haven't won anything since. To this day, my family blames me. Once you showed up, the Bills started to suck. And they try and pin it all on me. Milwaukee Brewers fans, how long has it been? 50 years in existence as a franchise. Came close once, but still waiting for that championship. Some people are better at waiting than others. For Simeon, though, now... He was able to hold the Christ in his hands, in his arms. 
what he had been waiting for, who he had been waiting for for all those years, finally delivered to him. God fulfilling the promise. And, and picture that, if you would. What it's like to finally, finally, finally get what you've been waiting for. The problem I think a lot of us have run into over this last year is a combination, a combination of shoulds and supposed tos. Because there were all things, all sorts of things that we learned this year, things we were told that we should do. We should wear masks at all times. We should social distance. We should, if we get a sniffle or a cough, take it seriously and not just assume it's a cold. Uh, we, we've got all sorts of shoulds that have been thrown at us. But we didn't need 2020, we didn't need the coronavirus to stack onto our pile of shoulds. Because as human beings, and especially as Christians, we, we crucify ourselves daily on a stack of shoulds. I should be better at this. I should be stronger. I should be more faithful. I should not give in to temptation. I should not fail to be who God has called me to be. Oh, we got all sorts of shoulds. A very good friend of mine says, you got to watch out or you'll should all over yourself. And then there's the supposed tos. I had a niece and a nephew, both this year, who were supposed to get married. Do you have any family events, weddings, that sort of thing that got either pushed aside or shrunk down to where no one could go? That's, that's how it was. It was supposed to be, but it didn't quite come about. We were supposed to celebrate 50 years as a congregation. We were supposed to have all sorts of events all year long celebrating the new temple that God had built and an open house for the community where they were supposed to come in and see what God has done in this place. And that list, I think, is even longer than the shoulds, the supposed tos that, that we've run into. What the shoulds and the supposed tos do to people is it starts clouding our vision and stealing our joy. And eventually, the, the shoulds and the supposed tos, if we let them run wild, they'll shrink our hope until there's very little left, if any at all. I believe in all of this, God has been teaching us to wait and to hope. Now, waiting is not necessarily our best thing either. You have to learn how to wait. You're not born as a waiter. For instance, any child on December 23rd, how good are they at waiting another day or two before tearing at all of those presents under the tree? See, children... They're, they're not especially gifted at waiting, are they? No, it has to be learned. And some of the rest of us, too. It, the only way to learn how to wait is to actually go through it, to practice it. How to hope is an even bigger challenge. Because, you see, hope is a lot more than just wishing or even guessing. You see, Simeon, Simeon was waiting in the hope of seeing the Lord's Christ because God had promised. And in all his experience with God, Simeon knew God to be faithful to every promise he makes. So you see, hope isn't based on what, what page it is on your calendar. Hope is based on who is out there 
leading the charge into tomorrow, into next month, into next year. Hope is in the who, not in the what. Because God doesn't always tell us exactly how these things are going to come about. And he rarely tells us when they're going to come about. But we know, we know who it is that is in control. We know who it is that stands triumphant, calling us, leading us, taking us, carrying us into the next chapter of life that he himself has authored. Because we have this promise from God. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Now, if you don't know God really well, then you have to learn on this waiting and this hoping and the combination thereof. When Simeon comes into the temple that day, he's riding 400 years of God's silence. That's how many years from the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament. 400 years. Throughout Israel's history prior to that, God was continually speaking to them. He had prophets. He had all those messengers. He finally, because they so continually refused to wait and refused to hope, God went quiet. He didn't disappear. He wasn't absent. He was just quiet. And for 400 years, Israel wondered, will we have to wait forever? And will our hope ever be fulfilled? But Simeon knew God. Simeon knew who was behind the promise. He also knew who was there in front of him as the journey continued. We learn this because the God who has created us, who has formed us and shaped us, tells us, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. When you walk through water, the the waves will not overwhelm you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. We know that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because Thou, God, is with us, comforting us and strengthening us. As we go from here to there, as we go from then to now, and to what is next. The resurrected Jesus makes that promise. The very last thing he says in Matthew's gospel, I am with you always. Even if you can't see me, I am with you always. And so we learn to wait and we learn to hope. Paul talks about where this hope comes from, how we get it, how we learn it, how we grow in it. He talks about it in Romans chapter 5. Okay, we've got... We've got the saving grace of Jesus Christ and we've got the faith, the gift of God that that grace inspires, creates, kindles in us. Okay, we got that. We stand before God by grace through faith. Though now we have a season of trouble, of turmoil. We we run into a 2020. And we experience the hurting side of life. The suffering side of life. Paul tells us in Romans 5, suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because of who is in the hope, who is behind it and all around it. Because God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners... While we were yet waiting so impatiently, while we were wavering in our hope, Christ Jesus died for us. Christ Jesus rose again for us to remind us and even convince us 
that all suffering, all pain, every season of hurt is temporary. There is an end to it. But the joy that comes in knowing Jesus Christ, that lasts forever. And there is nothing on your calendar that can ever steal that joy away from you. Because that's where hope takes us. So we have this faith that learns to hope and leads to joy. Do you know when we get to heaven, there is no faith anymore? There is no hope anymore when we get to heaven. Do you know why? Because then we've got it. We have it in our sight and in our possession. We have it in our hands. Hebrews 11.1 1 describes faith as being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, but in heaven we see it all. And hope is ultimately fulfilled when we are in the eternal presence of Jesus Christ and neither we nor he nor anyone else ever leaves. Paul talks about that 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, if you had that at your wedding. Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, it does not boast. He talks about the three gifts, though, faith, hope, and love. But he describes that when, when that day comes, when our ultimate hope has been fulfilled, then, then faith and hope are no longer needed. But what still stands? The love. The love of God in Christ Jesus that lasts forever, that carries us through every season of life. So 2021 has got to be better, right? Well, maybe. I don't think the bar has been set really high. But for a lot of us, 2019 kind of sucked either from people we lost, struggles we faced, hurts we experienced, and we thought, oh, thank God, it's 2020. That's what we thought. That's what we told ourselves. The reason why we can look forward to 2021 is not because, well, there couldn't possibly be anything worse. Oh, yes, there can It's because we know who is there. We know who owns 2021. It's the same one who owned 2019 and 2020. He owns it because he bought it, paid for it with his own blood. So Simeon takes Jesus in his hands, in his arms, and starts to sing. We take Jesus into our arms knowing now that we have seen the salvation the deliverance of the promise the source of all hope and all joy but even better than Jesus being in our hands in our arms we are in his and he's got a lot better grip than you and I will ever have. Now about this waiting thing, I got a theory here. Stay with me on this. I want to go back to the Chicago Cubs. All right? 108 years. My dad, in the last half of his life, became a Cubs fan. I didn't like it. I refused because he was born in Pittsburgh and raised us all to be Pittsburgh fans, and then I moved to Wisconsin and married a Wisconsin girl, and it is state law that you must convert to the Packers and the Brewers when you marry a Wisconsin girl. But he loved the Cubs. And in 2014, Jesus took my dad home to eternal life. Two years later, the Cubs win the World Series. And I'd like to think that somehow he pulled some strings when he got up there 
and said, it's been long enough, Lord. Now stay with me on this. The Buffalo Bills. It's been two years since my mom, a lifetime Buffalo Bills fan, died. See where I'm going with this? Now it's two years later. The Buffalo Bills. It's also been two years since my brother in Christ, our good friend Mark Peters, has died, and he's a lifelong Brewer fan. Two years. I think all it takes is for one of these people, one of these earthly simians, to get up there and start harping in Jesus' ear that it's been long enough that, it, that it's, it's time for a championship. Prove me wrong. It could be. This is our, our last time together in the year 2020. I hope and pray that each one of us has learned just a little more deeply and a little more eternally that sometimes for all the shoulds and the supposed tos sometimes God makes us wait but he teaches us how to hope amen Let us stand as we come before God in prayer. Holy Lord Jesus, we rejoice that you have come to us. We take you in our arms, Lord, intending never to let you go, but from time to time we tend to loosen our grip. That's when we trust, Lord Jesus, in your hold on us, that you take us into your arms never to leave us nor forsake us, never to let us go. This is why we learn how to wait, waiting on you to deliver on your promises, waiting for your plan to unfold, knowing full well, Lord Jesus, that you are still in control, that your plan for us is far better than the plans we made for ourselves, that you lead us forward into next month, next year, even into the next life, by the grace of God that surpasses all understanding because of the peace of God you inspire in our hearts. So Lord Jesus, remind us as we are waiting to know that our hope is not a guess, but it is sure and certain because of whom we place our hope in. We celebrate, Lord Jesus, your gift of life and love, and we celebrate the gift of marriage 
that you have given to Robert and Elaine these some 60 years. May you continue to bless them in their love for you and their one for, love for one another. We pray, Lord, for all of those who are dealing with COVID, uh, recovering from it, battling it even now. We pray also a prayer of thanks and praise that there are vaccines that have been developed. We also pray, Lord Jesus, that they work with minimal side effects and that you provide us ultimately an end to this disease. We pray, Lord, for all of those who are in need of their great physician to grant healing and strength and comfort. And so we lift up Vi and Gary and Jerry. We pray for Ron and for Tina, for Sue, for Anita, for Dwayne and Carol, for Paul, for David, for Jerry. We pray for all those who are battling cancer, for Dave and Judy and Dorothy and Julie, that you would be with them always through every step of the process. We ask your blessing, Lord Jesus, upon those who serve you by serving our country. And especially do we lift up Noah and Victoria and Brad. And we pray that you would surround all who serve with your guardian angels. So also we pray for those who serve you by serving our community. And we lift up our police officers and firefighters, all of our emergency and health care workers. And especially do we offer today a prayer of thanks for those hero cops in Nashville who prevented much more serious loss of life. We pray, Lord Jesus, for your missionaries who carried the gospel around the world. We pray for Ashley, for Kip and Tammy, for Marshall and Bannis, for Elliot and Serena, that you would bless their work for your kingdom. We pray, Lord, for our compassion children, for Julio and Lori, that we would bless them as you have certainly blessed us. We pray for our elected leaders, for President Trump, for President-elect Biden, for Governor Evers, for all those who lead by serving. And may you truly, Lord Jesus, give them servant hearts. We pray for those who serve you within your kingdom of grace. We pray for Matthew and for Dwayne and for Jeff and for all who are called to lead your church. We pray for our college students, that they enjoy the break, that they prepare for another semester that above all, they stay strong in their faith, their hope in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for all of our students and parents, our teachers and administrators, who continue to face another half of the school year, dealing with uncertainty, with immense challenge. We know, Lord Jesus, this has been a difficult year for our young people to learn. May they continue the sincere effort. May their parents continue to do all they can to help our kids grow, in not only in their learning, but in their character. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our shut-in brothers and sisters, that you would come to them and make your home with them. We lift up Lyle and Marilyn, Vern and Joan. We pray for Betty and for Carl, for Carol and for Ginny. We pray for Carlin, for Ernie, for Jean, for Gary and Donna, and for Lowell. We pray, Lord Jesus, the way you have taught your family to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder, including for those who are worshiping in the house today, if you would please fill out the yellow worship cards. There's a box in the back as well as the offering boxes in the back. And a reminder to our brothers and sisters in Christ at home, uh, you can still give your offerings to the Lord through online giving, so please check out the, the website for that opportunity. As I said before, we do not have a New Year's Eve service this week. Uh, we are setting that aside uh, we do come back, like Jessica mentioned earlier, next weekend with our full worship schedule. So Saturday night at 5, and then Sundays at 8 and 9.30 and 10.45. So we'll look forward to seeing you here or online as we celebrate a new year in the mission and ministry of Christ Jesus in this place. The good Lord go before you to lead you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, above you to protect you, within you to inspire you. Go with the peace and the power of Almighty God. Amen.
God reaches us with the love that reaches others. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing.